The 2023 FIBA World Cup, well, it's a wrap for that. The teams, they've received their medals. The United States will not be returning home with a medal. So let's recap the World Cup and look at what is next for USA Basketball. The contributor to the Action Network and NewYorkPost.com, that is Brian Fonseca, who has done a great job covering this tournament for us and coming on with us and giving us great analysis. Brian, how you doing, man? Doing well. Uh, the World Cup is over, so I'm a little sad. Uh, and it ends on a day that football begins. So there's a little bit of a bittersweetness there. But now we get to enjoy some football. But we'll, we'll, we'll bid, bid farewell to the World Cup this year. It was a good one. It was a good one. All right. And Brian, in the gold medal game, Germany knocked off Serbia to win the World Cup. They were the 11th ranked team in the world heading into this tournament. Can you put into perspective what the Germans accomplished here? Their first World Cup ever. And Dennis Schroeder was outstanding in this tournament. You know, this Germany team is very good. And even going into the tournament, you figure that they would probably make a run, but not a run this late. You figure that they would get to maybe the quarterfinals or something along those lines and perhaps even push beyond that. But they were the team that went 8-0. and And going into the tournament, they had the eighth shortest odds to win it all. So the, the betting odds were basically telling you, like, yeah, this is a quarterfinal team. So this was a bit of an upset for them to make this run, to beat Team USA along the way as well, which is sort of the feather in the cap, and then beat a very good Serbian team who, while they didn't have Nikola Jokic and all the other guys we've mentioned on previous segments, still a very good Serbian squad. And Germany was just the best team. You don't need to technically go undefeated to win this tournament, but they did. They have. And Dennis Schroeder, man, I mean, <laughs> this this has to be a feather in his cap as well. You want to talk about breakout stars sort of from this tournament. We know Dennis Schroeder can ball. He's had some success in the NBA. But to do this on the world level, you look at the other guys that have been FIBA World Cup MVP since the turn of the century, a list that includes Dirk Davisky, Paul Gasol, Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving, and Ricky Rubio. Dennis Schroeder joins that list. Yeah, very impressive performance by him. Very impressive performance by the Germans in this tournament. Now, the United States, they did play Canada in the bronze medal game. And, man, what a game this was. It was a fantastic game. Team USA did fall to Canada in overtime, 127 to 118. Brian, was the U.S. losing this game and failing to medal due to the same result that we saw in the semis where they just couldn't get stops? It's the first time that Team USA doesn't medal in back-to-back -back World Cups in over 50 years. And Dex, I told you before this, this is a game they cannot lose. Like losing to Germany is one thing, losing to Lithuania is one thing. But to go home empty-handed after being the favorite by far to win a tournament, I will remind people, minus 125 to win the whole thing. France was second at plus 900. And Team USA and, you know, the American people can say all they want about, hey, this team, you know, wasn't the best American players, whatever, whatever. They don't take this seriously. They take the Olympics seriously. And it's like, honestly, you should take every international competition seriously. The way Coach K did when Team USA was struggling in terms of being, you know, an elite program in the mid 2000s and had people commit for a two year period where Kobe Bryant was playing in the FIBA America Cup, right? Yeah. In 2007, beating the Virgin Islands. Kobe Bryant at his peak was on that team, as was LeBron James, as was Amari Sotomayor, Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony, and so on. So, Team USA really, like, they lost this game. And the program itself needs to look in the mirror and really get a commitment from guys or this is just going to keep happening. And maybe maybe they just care about the Olympics and maybe that's it. But OK, everyone else is going to care about everything else because every international competition should matter, not just the Olympics. And especially as the World Cup expands, because this is only the second World Cup to have 32 teams in it. And FIBA is making a concerted effort to make this as big as, if not bigger than the Olympics, like what's happened in soccer over the last, you know, however many years. Yeah, and I think I'm in agreement with you. It's time to take every tournament seriously. You can't have the arrogance that you're just going to go out there and win no matter who you send out. Seems like those days are over. And the reason we think those days are over, you just mentioned this, Brian. Team USA, they failed to medal in their second consecutive World Cup. First time that has happened since 1970. Do you... Like, look at this tournament, I should say, as a wake-up call for USA basketball in terms of roster construction. Do you think this is a wake-up call for them in regards to that? Only if they're allowed to be one. Grant Hill, who, you know, is one of the guys putting this team together, was selling to us that this was a team 
who can play together, who is made to win this tournament. Betting odds makers believed it. A lot of people believe that. And clearly, I thought that they were good enough to win the tournament. I didn't bet them uh, at the start of it, but I thought that they were good enough to win the tournament from a talent perspective. And it looked like, you know, they were building some sort of chemistry there. Then when they actually played, it was like, okay, they have this propensity to sort of get off to these slow starts, as we've talked about that so many times, and then pick it up in the second half. But if you're looking at what you need to do, you just need a committed core. You need like a real core for Team USA going forward. It doesn't necessarily need to be all your best players because realistically, that's not going to happen. If you're LeBron James, what's the point, right? If you're Kevin Durant at this point, what's the point? You've done pretty much all you need to with Team USA. And the whole thing about Team USA is you have the depth in order to get great players. Just get some more of the great players to commit long term to something get them at least and this is what you can do now because before the world cup was every two years you know removed from the olympics now they're basically less than a year removed from each other because that changed in 2019 and well covid <laughs> sort of got in the way of that but this is the first time we're actually going to see that new schedule where the world cup just happened and the olympics are going to happen less than a year from now you can get going forward a core of guys to commit to both teams and then just sort of redo the core every four years or so right you can just do that every couple of years or whatever it is and in order to do that you need guys like i think you know you'll need a jason tatum you'll probably need a jalen brown if we could throw out some of the names of players who are going to be in there steph curry has said that he wants a gold medal we'll see um, and ultimately, the NBA, this is a program and this is a, a league, really, not the program itself, but this is a league in the NBA that guys get hurt a lot now. And you have to be, you know, weary about who's going to be available in the future. So we'll see what ultimately happens, but you need to be able to get guys to commit regularly and not just throw out 12 guys every so often and just be like, have at it. Yeah, that commitment and it becoming a true program seems like something that would be needed for USA Basketball, which brings me to my last question, Brian. I'm going to make you the executive director of USA Basketball. If you were the executive director of USA Basketball, what kind of roster would you field for the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris? You need to figure out a way to survive the physicality of some of these other centers that have been killing you, right? And some of these other bigs in general that have been killing you, right? Um, Bam Adebayo was able to get you to the gold medal. You need to bring him back. You need some real size on the interior. No offense to Jaron Jackson Jr. I feel like internationally, he's probably more of a four and plays more like a four. He was seventh on his own team in rebounds per 40 minutes. That's not great for somebody who's your starting center, right? You need to bring in just guys because you don't have a lot of post players who are going to compete with the Jonas Valanciunas's sort of bucket for bucket in that way. So can you get a Mitchell Robinson to guard him without fouling? Can you get a Jared Allen to guard him without fouling? And really, what's Joel Embiid going to do? Because if you could convince him to play for Team USA, because there's going to be a little bit of a courtship for him now ahead of next year's Olympics, France, I mean, France is going to be in the driver's seat because Joel Embiid has French citizenship and France is going to want to make that splash because the Olympics are in France. And if USA misses out on Joel Embiid and isn't able to take him, kind of like what they did with Paolo Bancaro, where it looked like he was going to play for Italy and then he ended up playing for Team USA, then get Bam at a bio, get a Jared Allen, get a Mitchell Robinson. Is Shet Holmgren going to be ready? This is kind of what you're looking at because in America, you're not really developing those centers who are going to score with their back to the basket and provide that level of physicality. Uh, but you will get guys who are good defensively. And then from there, you're going to need the wings because in the NBA, there's one thing the NBA has, a lot of skilled wings. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, is Devin Booker going to come back? Steph Curry would help because Steph Curry is as good as anyone in the world when he's on. And then from there, some of the younger guys who can really relish this opportunity. De'Aaron Fox is somebody I would look at to be on this roster next year if he's ready. And then who's going to come over for the World Cup team? Maybe a Mikhail Bridges, maybe a Jalen Brunson, definitely a Tyrese Halliburton. I think he's qualified for this, and I would say Anthony Edwards is as well. All right. I like how your roster could shape up. We will see what Team USA does going forward as we move towards the 2024 Olympics in Paris. That is Brian Fonseca, contributor to Action Network and NewYorkPost.com. Brian, I enjoyed the World Cup. I know you did, too. Thank you for all your analysis. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me.